before Lamy Worm has been a major pest in the Americas, actually for decades, for even centuries, I would say, because the, it has been there from what we know since the 17th or the 18th century. But then it was reported as a major pest first around 1964, when the devastation uh, became very pronounced. We came to know that in a few countries in Africa, uh, fall armyworm is present. And where it is present, it can attack quite a number of crops. It has uh, favorite crops and host in maize, in rice, in sorghum, in millet, beans, cowpeas, vegetables. Uh, for us to see this pest in Africa, we thought it's not something which is new globally. And FAO being a global organization, we thought we should call on those, especially from the Americas, who have this experience, to share those experiences that they have. And then also for African scientists and countries to share with them and other colleagues within on what is going on currently in Africa. Fall armyworm as it is uh, as of today has been uh, seen, identified in over 25 countries in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa. And a number of countries have prominently taken uh, the lead to see what can be done. These countries include South Africa, uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, Benin, and we want to see of these measures that have been taken because there is a panic, especially when farmers panic. I mean, the food security and nutrition security base of any country is being threatened. So that was what made us to now come up with uh, a series of major meetings. The main expectation is to gather key lessons learned from the Americas in dealing with this pest and to benefit to the maximum to implement them in Africa, in the different agroecosystems in Africa. So to find good adapted best practices that the farmer can implement in a way that is as sustainable as possible. That's the main expectation of this meeting. I think, yes, indeed, um, we have to face the situation that this pest will stay in Africa. We cannot eradicate it. So we have to really adapt good management methods. Now, what the farmer can do and what FAO can do is a lot. Basically, we have to distinguish between immediate short-term measures that the farmer needs to put in place and needs to be enabled to do. We have medium-term measures and we have long-term measures. Given the fact that this pest is really new to Africa, it has been introduced and uh, officially recorded for the first time in January 2016, so we don't, we, we even, we have one or two years, or oh, not, not even two years of experience, it's too early to come up with a complete set of recommendations. So, of course, we have short-term measures, and there we have to find simple methods, simple solutions, which is really trying to have cheap control interventions, such as egg crushings, or if this does not work, combating the larval stage, the larval stage of the pests in maize, particularly in using very simple technologies like sand or ash or earth and putting the sand, ash or earth in the walls of the maize plants. This is already quite an effective method that has been used in South America. On the medium term, we have to strengthen the farmer in 
identifying the pests reliably and also in appreciating the work of the natural enemies, of his friends in the field. So it's really to introduce an IPM approach, an integrated pest management approach. That means to take any measures to avoid pest buildup in a field and in an area. And FAO can, of course, support the farmers using the farmer field school approach, which has been used by FAO in many parts of the world. And we have now also many important programs in Africa going on. Well, it's good that we have those who have stayed with this pest for some time, at least longer than us, uh, to share their experiences with us. Interacting with those who have come from the Americas, uh, we could ask some concrete questions about the management. What do you do? What kind of uh, permutations you need to do and so on? And that's what makes it very useful. What was necessary to do with it, which was uh, bringing in the chemicals and giving it out. We all knew as experts that that was not the best thing to do, but that was what you could do at that time. And that's what the African governments have done. But we all know it's not good. It's not good because this is a pest that multiplies so fast. And for the conditions we have here in Africa, um, within 30 days, you could have an egg uh, growing to become a full-blown moth and start laying eggs. And we will quickly develop resistance. And that's even some of the information our colleagues from Brazil are just sharing with us. That almost every uh, active ingredient that we use here, they have found resistance in that on the following way.